Hi there everyone, welcome to the Royal Astronomical Society. We're here with the head of the library, Sean Prosser. Today we're going to talk about circles, the moon and a man named Henry Perigal. Have a look at these. What have you got for us here, Sean? Can I lift one of these up? You can. It's very heavy, but there's a handy handle underneath. You ready? Pretty cool. We will come back to these, but I just wanted to excite you with what's coming up. Okay. Henry Perigal, who is this? Well, he has been described as one of the venerable patriarchs of the Royal Astronomical Society. He was born in 1801. He had a really long productive life working as a bookkeeper, but he was also absolutely fascinated by science, especially astronomy. And he belonged to dozens and dozens of learned societies, one of which was the Royal Astronomical Society. These are some of the instruments that he left to us. I think yeah. it is fair to say his life obsession was circles. First of all, we've got this book, which was contributed by his brother. Yeah. It's his life and works. Mm -hmm. What's in this book? It's basically a compilation of extracts from his diary, various notices, like short extracts of his publications, testimonies, memories contributed by other people. So it's like a sort of collage, a scrapbook of, of his life, his long life, really. We've even got pictures of the rooms he worked in. Yeah. I love yeah. the look of his offices there. They're really cool. Yeah. We see lots of little pictures here of sort of circles and spirals and some examples of his work. Yeah, so one of his great skills was with the lathe and he used that to create really beautiful spirographic diagrams which he called circloids and bicircloids. And you've got some here for us. Yes. These are gorgeous. I don't think either of us have the mathematical expertise to analyse them in tremendous detail but I'm sure there are people watching who are going to do so. He says here, all these curves may be produced by two circular movements in the same plane in three ways, either on a fixed plane by moving a point, on a moving plane by a fixed point, or on a moving plane by a moving point. Another thing he did that's quite interesting was he came up with a proof for the Pythagorean theorem. Yes, so you can see the diagram here, starting off with a right angled triangle. Yeah, well, I've not there seen are. that one before, it's quite nifty. And this one has been sort of etched into history, hasn't it? Yes, it has. Because we've got his gravestone, and we can't see it in this picture, but you tell me that his proof of the Pythagorean theorem is etched on the gravestone. It must be on the other side. Yes, it must be. But he wasn't always right on the money, was he? Because I was reading his obituary in the notices of the Royal Astronomical Society, actually, and it made for quite interesting reading. Here we find out one of his beliefs that was particularly contentious. For there is no masking the fact that he was a paradoxer, pure and simple. <laughs> his main conviction being that the moon did not rotate and his main astronomical aim in life being to convince others and especially young men not hardened in the opposite belief of their grave error. Mm. So one of his life missions was to convince people that the moon does not rotate. Mm. The moon does rotate. It, the moon definitely rotates. Uh, but this was an item that was contributed to the society by Perigal. And this is clearly part of his moon mission. Yeah, so we have two items that were given to us. They're not very well described. So this could be either a selenoscope or a lunarium. So one of yeah. the items we haven't got, yeah. and this is one of the items. Can I turn this and show people what happens? Yeah. So you can imagine him demonstrating this to prove his point young impressionable yeah, scientists yeah. whose beliefs have not yet been hardened he's <laughs> <laughs> and he's trying to convince them i don't know sean i'm beginning to believe <laughs> two of these um spheres are moving and one of them isn't just because of the way that the cogs have been set up i think it's nice i also think the globe of the earth is really lovely too like if you said that i could take one home anything home i think i'd choose this one i don't think you're gonna let me take it home though, don't worry <laughs> we're, we're too fond of it yeah and all it represents it's just really obvious that Henry Perigal was so well looked on by so many people. He wasn't just standing up at meetings and asking questions and coming up with suspect theories. He was also going to the, the, the astronomical club dinners and generally, I think, providing joy and lightheartedness to the proceedings. It seems like, it seems like he yeah. was a really liked man. And how yeah. could you not like someone who's turning up with things like this as well and saying, have a look, have a look what I've made. Yeah. So this one says, presented to the Royal Astronomical Society by Henry Perigal, FRAS, 13th of June, 1879, to assist the fellows of the society in studying the resultant effects of double circular motion. I like how it's got these coins. You told me these were pennies and farthings. Yeah, three pennies and three farthings. 
We do have, because Shan is very thorough and finds everything, we have the letter that was written when these were donated. He's still pushing his moon thing. Yeah. My Lord President and members of council, I have the honour to present to the Royal Astronomical Society two instruments which I call rotometers to assist the fellows of the society in studying the resultant effects of double circular motion. In the next session, I intend to call the attention of the society thereto with reference to the movements of the earth, sun, moon, and planets. Mm. I have the honour to be my Lord Gentleman, an old fellow of the society, <laughs> Henry Perigal. He went on to contribute for another 20 years or so. He's amazing. Henry Perigal, mathematician, bookkeeper, paradoxer, donator of nice objects. Yeah, and he has a fantastic beard as well. He, he had a very nice beard. <laughs> this episode was brought to you by 23andMe, the online genetics service that can help you learn what the 23 chromosomes that make up your DNA can teach you about your ancestry, traits and health. To help with scientific research and discoveries and to learn your own personal DNA story, go to 23andMe.com objectivity and it definitely rotates. <laughs>